chapter 1. Book of Philippians chapter 1. When you find the book of Philippians, it's one of those little books after Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians. You've got Galatians, Ephesians, and Philippians. And find Philippians chapter 1. And I'm hoping that the message this morning will help all of you appreciate your church and maybe give you a little bit of an understanding of what's going on in, the, in this world and in America with, with different kinds of Baptists and exactly what is an independent fundamental Baptist uh, versus Southern Baptists. And so Philippians chapter 1, if you have it, would you stand with me please and reference for the reading of the Word of God. Philippians chapter 1. This is my final Sunday of 50 years of preaching and uh, starting off again uh, next Sunday and looking, looking forward to it. Philippians chapter 1, we'll begin reading at verse 3. I have often signed my name with this, and I could say this of each one of you if I were to inscribe something to you. Philippians 1, 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing. Now, this is a wonderful verse. You ought to pay attention to it. That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. You could take that as a promise of eternal security. Yes. Amen. Amen. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, Inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound, yet more and more, in knowledge and in all judgment. That is, you need to learn what things to love and what things not to love. Amen. You need to be able to make choices. That you may approve things that are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ under the glory and praise of God. Our text verse, we'll stop our reading there, and our text verse will be verse number 10. That you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. May we pray. And now, Heavenly Father, I pray for the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and I trust that you will bless your word and that you will bless and bear witness to the truth that is given in this message. I pray, dear Father, if there's anyone here that is just a church member, and has never truly been born again, that that blessed Holy Ghost would reprove of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That they realize, they might realize that it's not uh, going to get them to heaven by just being and finding the best church or the right church. But they need the Savior, the right Savior, the only Savior. But I do pray that you'd bless and open our eyes to your truth about New Testament local churches. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask these things for thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Won't you be seated, please? As we look in the Bible, one of the things that we can learn about prayer is to look at the prayer requests that are recorded in Scripture. In other words, if you wanted to learn what to pray for, the Bible says we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit makes an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. But you could look at some of the things that Paul prayed for or that Paul requested prayer for. You can find both of those things in the Word of God. And here he said that he was praying for his converts to grow in knowledge and judgment. That is, your love for the right things uh, needs to grow. You don't want to grow in love for the wrong things. Your love needs to abound more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. And the purpose is, verse 10, 
that you may approve things that are excellent. Now, approving something and proving something, the Bible says, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Uh, that is to test something out and find out what it is. And if it's better than something you've had before, then it excels. That's what excellent means. Excellent means something that excels. We usually think it's perfection. For instance, if you made a hundred on a test score and somebody wrote down excellent, you might associate excellent with perfection. But excellent just means you surpassed. It could be you surpassed the teacher's expectation. It could be you surpassed everything else that everybody else did. It could mean that you surpassed anything that you've turned in in a test paper in the past. But that's what it's referring to. It's excel. And we're to approve the things that are excellent. Now, as you get older in the Lord, as you get stronger in the Lord, you should be able to tell the difference and be able to choose those things which are better than others. Uh, we can't use the term today, but used to, what the, what the term discerning or discriminating meant. It meant that you were able to tell the difference uh, a discriminating buyer, for instance, might realize that this brand of car, what's your favorite brand? Got any Ford people? Ford. Chevrolet people? Okay. Honda people, whatever. Okay. Uh, people have, they think that this is a much better car than this one. And some people, uh, whether it be a car or whether it be the way a house is made or whatever it is, they have had their understanding improved to where when you bring up those things, they can tell you which one is better quality. And a Christian needs to grow to where he not only needs to know what things are permissible, but you need to know as you grow older in the Lord what things are better than others. Uh, as a baby, we don't expect a baby uh, to have much discernment, do we? I mean, uh, our, our baby took car keys, instead of plugging them in the car, plugged them into an electrical outlet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's causes a baby to know the difference. I mean, if the key goes in, it must be all right. <laughs> a baby can't tell the difference, for instance, between a, a bowl of chocolate pudding. Well, I won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Just let your imagination run. That's the truth. You've seen them covered with it. Yeah. And it wasn't chocolate pudding. <laughs> Next Sunday will be my 50th anniversary of surrendering to God's call to preach. And although I've not been a pastor that, that whole time, I had a time of preparation, uh, I've been preaching for 50 years. Three and a half years after I surrendered to God's call to preach, I started pastoring uh, the first uh, church that I've pastored through these years. It's Faith Baptist Church of Baymanet, Alabama. And it was... A, uh, an independent Baptist church. Made up my mind uh, just a short time, maybe a few weeks after surrendering to preach as the Lord gave me the information uh, he led me out of the Southern Baptist Convention to become an independent Baptist preacher. Now I didn't start pastoring until three and a half years after surrendering to preach, but uh, thank the Lord, God's been good to me over these years. Our church uh, we, we put it on the bulletin, and I tell people, I tell them Monday through Friday and on the radio and inviting people, our church is a Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church. And if they ask, I tell them about Bible-believing, it's this one right here, it's the one we believe. Yeah. King James 1611 Authorized Version Bible. And we've had people come to this church to visit or join uh, strictly because, strictly because that that is what we are. We are a Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church. And through the years, many times I've been asked, well, what's the difference between y'all and Southern Baptists? And you know, when I, uh, when I surrendered to preach, I didn't really know the difference myself. Matter of fact, I was shocked when I joined the military and got sent on, uh, on RMA school duty up to Maryland and found that there were Southern Baptists in Maryland. I thought, how can Southern Baptists be in Maryland? You'd think that everything up there would be Northern Baptists. Mm -hmm. And out on the West Coast, they'd be Western Baptists. And, you know, South Carolina would be Eastern Baptists. 
But got up there and sure enough, I didn't know the difference either. And many people have asked me through the years, what is the difference? And I'll answer that question about the difference and try to give you some scriptural reasons why and some scriptural uh, help to approve things that are excellent. Somebody asked me this question just a few years ago and, and I did as I often do. I took an old piece of paper. I'm real cheap. And just about everything that I run off on a copy machine, if there's extra pages left and they're blank on one side, I save it. I've got, I've got stacks of paper this, this big uh, of stuff that's been printed on one side. And so that becomes my note paper, my scrap paper. I took one of those, folded it in half, and I started writing down the difference. And when I think about something that I thought was important, I'd, I'd write it on there and stuck it back in my drawer. And so here I want to bring you some thoughts that, that I believe the Lord has given to me over the last, uh, well, over the last 50 years, really. And I am going to simply title the message. And I hope it'll help you. I'm going to title the message, The Difference. The Difference Between Southern Baptist and Independent Baptist. And it does make a difference that there is a difference because the church that you attend and join is going to have a major impact on your Christian growth and your Christian life. If you get into uh, the wrong kind of church, you may stay ignorant and carnal all your life. But if you come to the right kind of church with the right kind of attitude, you can learn the Word of God. One of our ladies here, one of the things that she said to encourage me that is that has joined within the last year is, uh, in addition to other things, so to say, Pastor, I'm learning all the time. I'm just enjoying learning, coming to church and learning. But the difference is, is that if you get into uh, the right kind of church by proving the things that are excellent. A fellow said uh, to me about trying to find a church in a town and, and he couldn't find one that that uh, lined up with everything that he believed on everything. Has anybody ever been able to join a church that lined up with everything you believe about everything? I mean, if they lined up with everything I believe about everything, then nobody would like chocolate ice cream because I really believe that the best is blue bell homemade vanilla. Okay? I've never been a part of a church that believed everything I believe about everything. But what I told the fellow was, is I said, while I would never uh, join a Southern Baptist church, and I'm most tell you reasons why. But uh, what I would do is I'd find the best church in the area. That's right. I would not stay home. I would go to the best church I could find and I would be charitable toward things that I disagreed with. I'd be charitable toward brethren and sisters that I disagreed with. And I'd ask God to make me a blessing and give me a blessing by being in that church. I want to talk to you about that kind of attitude. Again, I, I, I am not saying all Southern Baptists are lost. Some of you got saved in the Southern Baptist Church. I am not saying you're lost. I was saved in the Southern Baptist Church. February 11, 1968. I surrendered to preach in a Southern Baptist Church. Now within like a month to two months, I don't remember exactly from, from I surrendered in March, somewhere around April, May, we got out of the Southern Baptist Convention and I believe the Lord led me out of the Southern Baptist Convention never to return. I've got a booklet. You can see Ms. O'Neill if you'd like a copy of it on why I am not a Southern Baptist. And if you've got internet connection and, and don't want the booklet, you can go to YouTube. It's on YouTube uh, about why I am not a Southern Baptist. I was saved in a Southern Baptist church. So you're not listening to a preacher, and don't lie about them. You're not listening to a preacher that says all Southern Baptists are lost. I do not believe that. But I don't preach in their churches, and I don't have them preach for me. Amen. And there are differences between individual churches of any denomination. Right. And belief, practice, atmosphere, whatever. I will not join a Southern Baptist church. But let me say, I do not have any desire to join or attend some independent Baptist churches. I'm not going to ever choose a Southern Baptist church to, and I'm not going to pastor one. Uh, people, I can't remember who it was. Somebody got in touch with Ms. O'Neill and, and said, your pastor is always blasting the Southern Baptist condition. Your husband always passed, uh, blasting the Southern Baptist condition. But if he got him a great big church paying him big money, he'd go in a heartbeat. And the, the guy was lying, of course, because it would But 
having, uh, having said that, I understand that there are some independent Baptist church got a real problem. And I understand that, that there are saved people in Southern Baptist churches, and some of them uh, have got people in them that have got some real good points about them. They're exceptions to the rules. But what is generally going to hold true are some things that I'm going to mention to you uh, this morning. And I will say about some independent Baptist churches, some independent Baptist churches still have habits yeah. from back there in the Southern Baptist Convention. Right. Because most, not all, most independent Baptist churches that have been a, in existence for a long time were one time Southern Baptist churches. And if they weren't, then they've got people in them that were saved in the Southern Baptist Convention that are now independent Baptists. But there are churches that are still Southern Baptists in practice that call themselves independent Baptists. And there are churches that are independent Baptists that want to be identified as Southern Baptists, so they run with Southern Baptist people. And they have Southern Baptist preachers in. They preach in Southern Baptist meetings and conferences, and so forth. And if you go to their website, it aggravates the stew out of me to go looking for a church for somebody to visit while they're, while they're traveling and go to the website of a church that I thought might be an independent Baptist church, and nowhere can you find it say that they're independent. Mm -hmm. Nowhere. And if that's the case, then I would try to find another place that comes out now and lets you know where they are. I'm going to give you some differences. Number one, the mission program is different. The mission program is different from Southern Baptist churches to independent Baptist churches. Again, please remember that on just about all of these points, there's exceptions to the rule. And you do have some Southern Baptist churches that have decided that they are going to support missionaries like we do. But they are probably like one out of a hundred that do that. There are some Southern Baptist churches that will have a mixed missions program and some of their missionaries will be picked out uh, the way that we pick them out. But the great difference that led me out of the Southern Baptist Convention didn't really have to do with an individual preacher, an individual church. As a matter of fact, my preacher was Bruce French uh, when I pulled out. First Baptist Church of Cantona, Florida. And he was my first pastor after I surrendered to preach, that actually called on me to preach, let me preach there. Well, I thought it was big time. First Baptist Church, Canton. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I felt like that my preacher could preach rings around any preacher that I knew of. Uh, but uh, I left because primarily of the missions program. Mm -hmm. And what I'm talking about is, here's the difference. Southern Baptist churches, their main means of supporting missionaries is for a percentage of their offerings to go into the cooperative program, the CP, the cooperative program. You never heard. I'm teaching you something this morning. You've never heard of it. The way that Southern Baptist churches support their missionaries primarily is through the cooperative program. And of course, people associated with, with uh, Southern Baptist headquarters and the mission board and all that, they would prefer that every dime that you give to missions uh, if you're a Southern Baptist Church, would go through the cooperative program. Sure. Now what you do is, is, is everybody may talk about missions every now and then have a missionary. Many uh, Southern Baptist churches have never heard a missionary uh, in person. They've never had one come by the, the church. And they support this program, and the people who run the program, they divvy out the money. Mm -hmm. It comes into a central pot, the cooperative program, and they divvy out the money. They send some money to orphanages. They send some money to hospitals. They put some money to stocks and bonds. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they do. And they send some money to home missionaries, some money to seminaries and colleges. And they send uh, some money to individual uh, missionaries. And I've read accounts through the years about what percentage actually gets to the missionary. I'm not going to try to uh, impress you by something that I am not actually sure about on that, so I'm not going to repeat anything, but I'm just saying it gets divvied out. And um, the difference is, is that independent churches, independent Baptist churches, uh, after prayer and many times after meeting the missionary, many times the missionary speaks to the people, uh, independent Baptist churches support individual missionaries and work. <coughs> 
that they've prayed over and they decided that this person, this work, this ministry is worthy of our support. Yeah. And we choose and we support that missionary. Yeah. And that's the way Glenwood Baptist Church supports missionaries. But not only do independent Baptist churches support individual missionaries, but they also stop yeah. support. That is, they separate from those they no longer have a good conscience about sending money to. For instance, if a school goes into apostasy, if a school hires a professor <clears throat> that doesn't believe the Bible, most schools do not have 100% professors that believe the King James Bible is inspired. That's true of most schools. And if a, if a, if a church finds that out, then it's, if it's an independent Baptist church, if they find out that, that the school they're supporting has got members of the faculty that don't believe the King James Bible, not use King James, I'm talking about don't believe the King James Bible, then that church, uh, after prayer, they can say, we don't want to support them anymore. And they can do that with a missionary. If a missionary uh, goes off into some apostasy, or if he divorces his wife, or if he marries two or three more because he's accepted in the place where he goes, yeah. hey folks, missionaries got to be careful. I know missionaries that believe it's okay to drink liquor in other countries because it's acceptable in those other countries. Right. Independent Baptist Church ought not to support them. Right. But you know what? In the Southern Baptist Convention, you can't do that. If there's, if there's one uh, college, say, if, if, I don't know if they are now or not, but like Wake Forest College, which was a Southern Baptist College, if, if, if the church was given the cooperative program and they find out that it is wicked as the devil, mm -hmm. and it is, Wake Forest is wicked as the devil, uh, as far as morals go and Bible goes, uh, then the Southern Baptist Church cannot decide we want to support everything in the program except we don't want to support uh, that one church. Mm -hmm. I'm saying individual churches in the Southern Baptist Convention that give to the cooperative program for their only means of mission support, they are not able to designate where the money goes within the cooperative program. And again, they may try to mix things up, but that's what, and that's the main reason why I left the convention back in 1972. Now, the Bible says over in, I'm not going to get you to turn there, but the Bible says over in the book of 2 John, and this is true about uh, if somebody were to uh, come over to your house and want you to give them money, but uh, they are a member of a cult. Uh, for instance, the Bible says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If they come in unto you uh, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speak. In other words, don't wish him well. Okay? It says, For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. That's 2 John chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. I'm saying that to knowingly and willingly and openly support those who are doing false doctrine and false practice. Notice two things were mentioned there. Bring out this doctrine and you become a participant of their evil deeds. If their beliefs are wrong, their behavior is wrong, you and I become a part of what they're doing by giving them money. I want to ask you to take your Bibles and do turn to this verse. Why don't you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 because this verse is the probably the main uh, emphasis of the difference between Southern Baptists and Independent Baptists. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I want to say that not only is the missions program different, but the movement is different. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And what I'm talking about is separation. Separation from false doctrine, separation from false practice, separation from sin and ungodliness. The atmosphere of a Southern Baptist church is one of accommodation. The atmosphere of a Southern Baptist church, generally speaking, and again, there are, I admit, there are exceptions to the rule, there are differences between churches. But I'm just, the next things that I'm going to give you after the mission, the next thing I'm going to give you are things that are generally true. You know the first time you leave, if you attend our church for a year, and then you'll go to one of those, any Southern Baptist churches in Jacksonville, you'll find these things to be generally true in every case. 2 Corinthians 
says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Now in verse 17 it says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Independent Baptist churches separate ourselves from bad doctrine. Yep, yep. That's not to mean that, that you have to line up with everything on every detail with everybody in this church be, able to be a member here. Mm -hmm. but, but, but if you come to our church, you're going to find that this church is sound mm -hmm. in doctrine and in practice. Mm -hmm. Whether everybody's got everything understood or not, we certainly uh, can agree that's not so. And when we have people who get saved, uh, those people are babes. Yeah. And you have people that come out of churches that haven't been taught the Word of God. We understand that it may take them a while. But one thing that, that you can count on if you're in a good independent Baptist church is they are going to separate from bad doctrine and they will expose bad doctrine. You may attend a Southern Baptist church for a long time before you ever hear them say anything about Benny Hinn. Jimmy Swagger. You attend a good independent Baptist church, they will expose those wolves in sheep's clothing. They'll tell you John Hagee is not sound. They'll tell you that Joel Osteen is nothing more than an entertainer and a positive thinker motivator. If you're in the right kind of church. I know this is more of a Sunday night message, but we need this here at Glenwood Baptist Church. Amen. We are not that other kind. We are a Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church. We pick out the missionaries that we want to support under the leadership of God Almighty. Amen. No headquarters anywhere is going to tell us that we've got to support this or that. Amen. And that we can't Support anybody uh, in the mission without supporting these other things too. And the movement is different. If you go into an independent Baptist church, there's going to be an emphasis on separation. Mm -hmm. Separation from bad doctrine and separation from bad deeds. Back when I uh, <coughs> first uh, pulled out of the convention, oh my, I could not believe so much stuff was being preached against in that independent Baptist church I attended that I was doing. <laughs> and if I wasn't doing it, my wife was doing it. And I realized that there was things that, that uh, probably people lived differently than me by, in the Southern Baptist Church I was saved in. But I didn't remember hearing them say that you can't do this, you can't do that, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you need to start doing this. Boy, oh boy, what a change we had in our life because of separation. Some of you have heard me tell the tales. I'm not going to go through it again for time's sake. Boy, we'd only been married just a short time. We got married in 70, 71 and pulled out of the convention in 72. Boy, did we have some growing pains. But thank the Lord for God's Holy Spirit leading and guiding. And it doesn't matter if you got saved in a Methodist church or whatever. If you got genuinely saved, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And the Holy Spirit, as you are confronted with the truth, the Holy Spirit, now if you listen, you've got to listen to it. He will not make it. But the Holy Spirit in you will bear witness. Whatever, however your background has been, the Holy Spirit will bear witness. I mean, tell you, sometimes I was sitting in church and it was like I was getting shot at. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I got to give up this, boom. <laughs> You've heard me tell about one preacher that went to one of these meetings where a preacher preached from, he's from the Carolinas. He's dead with the Lord now. Both of them are dead, but uh, most of my friends are dead. <laughs> What's that tell you? <laughs> but but uh, he listened to this guy preach, and he just preached, I mean, he preached up a storm. And he told my preacher friend who, who told the story on him, as they left the meeting, he said, boy, I'm glad that's over with. <laughs> And the preacher, my preacher, the preacher led me to the Lord. He said, uh, he said, I thought it was pretty good. And he said, well, yeah, it was, but he preached against everything. And he said, I just knew he was going to hit Coca-Cola's next, and I do love them. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And that's why some people don't want to go to an independent Baptist church. Yeah, that's right. Is they don't want to hear somebody preach against yeah. whatever it is that they do. Number three, another thing is different. The message is different. The message is different. I know I'll get your turn here, but 2 Corinthians 2.17 says, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Independent Baptist churches, and this is largely true of them today, it used to not be, but it is largely true today, independent Baptist churches have located the book. Place in the Old Testament I quoted this past week where the fellow said, I have found the book. Mm -hmm. And I said, under the comments, I said, I have too. It's a King James 1611 authorized version Bible. Mm -hmm. This is the book. We've located the book. Yeah. You go into a Southern Baptist church, you may have a preacher, you may have individuals, but you almost uh, have to go to a hundred of them to find one of them that the church takes a position on the King James Bible being the infallible, inerrant, inspired Word of God, and the others are not. That includes even the most conservative Southern Baptist preachers you've ever heard. Charles Stanley is not a Bible-believing preacher. That's right. I believe he's saved. He's probably one of the most sound preachers on television. He is not a Bible-believing preacher. He does not believe the King James Bible. And you'll, you'll have to go through hundreds of, of well-known uh, conservative Southern Baptist preachers to find one that believes what we believe here, that this book has no errors in it. Right. This book is translated perfectly. Amen. We don't just use it because it's the best. We use it because it's the Bible. Amen. We believe the Bible is God's infallible word. Amen. The message is different. Our church has located the book. Independent Baptist churches have located the book. And it's a King James Bible. Amen. I hold it up all the time and let people know where we stand. And not everybody has faced the issue. Not everybody has investigated the issue. And I realize somebody may get mad and leave because they don't believe that. That's all right. That's what we believe here. Amen. We've located the book and we live by the book. Amen. Every now and then we'll joke about it. And I'll say something like uh, that the King James Bible is our quarterly in Sunday school. <clears throat> and that's not to say nobody in our church will use literature for anything. But the literature that we use as our curriculum here at Glenwood Baptist Church is this Bible. Yeah, and we live by it. And it is the final authority in our church on everything. Yeah. The majority of Southern Baptist churches do not stand for the King James Bible. Yeah. And almost no Southern Baptist preachers believe that the King James Bible is inspired. Yeah. Right. Number four, what's different? Aren't you glad you asked? Yeah. Somebody that, that has asked in this church not even here today, so you're going to just have to pass this on to them. <laughs> What's the difference? I'll tell you something else that's different between independent Baptist churches and Southern Baptist is the music is different. Sure. The music is different. I was thankful to come to a church that wanted to sing out of the hymn books. Yeah. Amen. And we wanted to sing the old hymns. You know what the Bible says about worldly things, worldly music, worldly dress, and all that? Can you tell that we're trying not to emphasize all the worldliness of, of trying to have a worldly church? I don't believe God says, above all things, be ye worldly because I am worldly. God says, be ye holy for I am holy. And there ought to be a spirit of holiness, right. not worldliness. Yeah. Not let's see how worldly we can get and still get by with it. I've seen some preachers like that. They wanted to just see how close to filthiness can I get? Yeah. How close to worldliness can I get? You know what the Bible says? It says, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. 1 John 2, 15 and 16. When the Bible says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing, and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I don't believe that the Bible is talking about what some of you folks have heard in Southern Baptist churches you've been members of. Or that you've got relatives in. 
I almost played around with some of that stuff yesterday, day before yesterday. Y'all pray for me. I don't fall into temptation. <laughs> Anybody remember the Barretts? The Barretts got another one of those apps, and we kept them all day on Friday. Pray for Sister Amelia Barrett. Pray for Sister Amelia Barrett. Not because she Pray for her, that cancer. I'm not going to say anything more about details about it. Pray for Sister Amelia about the cancer. But anyhow, we had a great time with the kids. Sure enough, they did it again. They took, a, they took a picture of me, just like this, mouth closed. I know you think that's hard to find, but anyhow. <laughs> took a picture of me, mouth closed, not smiling, just looking. Did the same thing with Ms. O'Neill. You know how hard, well, anyhow. Took, took a picture of Ms. O'Neill, took a picture of me, and then, they put it in, and then they put it in this app, and they put a song of the Bee Gees. Anybody remember the Bee Gees from like the 50s or 60s? Put a, and uh, and you should have seen Mrs. O'Neill just this way. <laughs> but that's not all. You should have seen the preacher just going, oh, you know, had my eyes rolling up and everything. That kind of stuff with newer music is going on in Southern Baptist churches all over the place right now. And I told you there's differences in different churches. Some of them are more conservative than others. And some independent Baptist churches, sadly, sadly, have over the years compromised and gone back in that direction as well. But independent Baptist churches generally emphasize reverence over rock. I think it's a wonderful thing to have a church that's still singing, Revive Us Again. To have a church that's still singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We emphasize righteousness over reaching worldly attendees by looking and sounding like your favorite rock singers. I believe that the church ought not to sound like or look like a rock concert. Yeah. Give you another difference. Another difference between Southern Baptist churches and Independent Baptist churches is that the minister's roles are different. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Now the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about calling a pastor, about the way to do it, you know, voting and, and pulpit committees and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, people wonder and they, they consult and they talk to other preachers and they consult about themselves, not wanting to make a mistake about asking a preacher to come to a church. But if a church is in touch with God through prayer and whatever means, a preacher ought to come to a church because he has been appointed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And whatever means you use, whether it be a man putting his son into taking his place, whether it be having a bunch of preachers in, whether it be having one preacher at a time, voting on them, whatever means that people use technically to call a preacher, they ought to look to God and believe that when the answer comes, that the Holy Ghost put that man right. in that church. Yeah. Right. And, and if that happens, and you were participant in it, you ought to thank God for it, Amen. that God was merciful in doing it. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Paul spoke to a bunch of preachers in, uh, in a city, and he said, it was Ephesus, he said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Yeah. The, in the Bible, the overseer of a local church is called the pastor, yeah. also called the elder, also called the bishop. And independent Baptist churches are largely led by ministers who are appointed by God Almighty through the Holy Ghost leadership. Yeah. They're led by ministers who are accountable to God. In Hebrews, I'm going to read you a verse here. Hebrews chapter 13, this message, a message was preached from this verse when I was ordained uh, into the ministry. In Hebrews chapter 13, the Bible says in verse 17, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account. Now I can't give account for what you do in regard to my leadership. But I've talked to you about it before. God gives preachers the means of leadership 
By preaching and teaching the Word of God. Yeah. By prayer. By personal example. And then by persuasion. Yeah. That is where they just try to talk you into doing it. Having preached to you the truth. Having prayed for you. And having uh, led a personal example in front of you. Where you respect that person as a God called man of God. And then, and then try to do it. Other than that. The Bible gives the preacher no means by which he can control or subdue a congregation. He should be a servant leader yeah. of the congregation and he leads by doing those things. And he's accountable for what he does. If I live in such a way that causes this community and, and you to disrespect me and believe that I'm wicked, then I lose all my leadership. If I don't pray for you, I lose my leadership. If I don't preach the word of God, I don't have the leadership that God wants me to have. If a man's a God-called man, and if he'll preach the truth, it'll help you people if you keep coming. Yeah. It'll help you to grow, and you'll recognize it over a period of time. And over a period of time, that will give me leadership without me having to figure out how can I change the bylaws mm -hmm. so that I can uh, have it where I always have my way on this or that. I'm not going to push it that way. I'm going to keep preaching. Yep. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep trying to live right in front of you. And then if there's anything I will try to persuade you to do, I'll try to persuade you to do it. But usually if it has to do something with money, I'm not persuading persuade anybody about anything. Uh, if you can figure out a way to do it cheap, I wish you would do it. Uh, figure out a way to do it right. Let me mention just two more things to you. We'll close. And by the way, most Southern Baptist churches are not led by men of God. Most of them. You may have some that have a famous preacher that's on TV or whatever, but most churches are led by deacons, yeah. trustees, yeah. and sometimes even women. By the way, speaking of, about men of God, the Southern Baptist Church has been ordaining women for some time. That's right, yeah. For some time. And uh, did Beth Moore stay in the Southern Baptist Convention? Mm -hmm. I know she was in it. I know she was speaking and everything and uh, creating all kind of havoc among people that were conservative in there, but Southern Baptist churches have been wrong about leadership for a long, long time. Yeah. Then the militancy is different. In Jude, in Jude chapter 1 verse 3, Jude said, I was just going to write to you about the common salvation, but he said, I found it necessary to exhort you to earnestly contend for the faith. Independent Baptist churches engage in battle yeah. for right beliefs. Again, we'll stand up and will take a position on what is right. An independent Baptist church ought to have a preacher that will stand up about abortion. He ought to stand up about liquor. He ought to stand up about any wrong issue. Whether the Bible mentions it specifically, the Bible doesn't say the word abortion. And it doesn't use the word uh, beer, for instance, as an alcoholic beverage. But if a preacher is not willing to take a stand against that, he'll just go ahead and load up with the Methodists. Or the Southern Baptists. Somebody said the difference between the Methodists and the Southern Baptists was was the the Methodists drank uh, drank liquor and the Southern Baptists just drank beer. Yeah. <laughs> That's a joke. Okay, it's, it's not it's not a dogmatic statement. But the there's independent Baptist churches ought to serve as a lot of things. But one thing they ought to be is they ought to have a militancy about them. There will be something about the man of God where he looks and sounds like a commander. He looks and sounds like he's leading truth into battle. Yeah. It's not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. But it's a battle. Yeah. And you don't want somebody that sounds effeminate leading you yeah. into battle. Amen. Not if you're... The Lord is a man of war. Amen. A man of war. The last thing I'll say is that between the churches as a general rule, these last six things are general. The first thing I mention is just about true of all, unless they just withdraw from the cooperative program. And if church, if some of churches withdraws from the cooperative program, it is just that close to just being an independent Baptist yeah. church. Mm -hmm. They want to maintain their independent Baptist church, but they're not. And they'll find out if they ever withdraw from the cooperative program, they're going to have a hard time. Mm -hmm. But they start wanting to go to associational meetings and Convention meetings and things like that. But the last thing is the morals are different. Yep. The morals are different. Now morals are different uh, uh, today between churches. But the truth is, 
is if you go to an independent Baptist church, the emphasis is going to be more on practical as well as inner holiness. First Peter 1 Peter 1.5 says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. I want to be a good preacher. I want to be. And I don't claim to be. I want to be a good preacher. But more than that, I want to be a holy preacher. So that I can lead a church practically. So that if you follow me as I follow Christ, I won't be leading you into wickedness. And leading you into sin. A preacher needs to be a holy preacher. When, when the qualifications are given in 1 Timothy 3 for a bishop, as far as I know, as far as I can remember, there's not one mention in 1 Timothy 3 about the bishop being able to hold an audience for 45 minutes yeah. or keep anybody from falling asleep or draw thousands of people to come and hear me where everybody's saying, whoa, you never heard a preacher like our preacher. Yeah. Everything I find in there in 1 Timothy 3 is about how he lives. You read it sometime. It says a bishop must be, and then it goes through there. It says nothing about his doctrine on the second coming, even though I believe that's important. It says nothing about his doctrine about anything. Yeah. It says he's got to be this, and it talks about his life. I believe independent Baptist churches ought to and do <coughs> largely have an emphasis on holy living, mm -hmm. on heavenly living. Whereas if you go to that other kind of church, some people are going to leave our church so that they don't feel under pressure when they go live like the world and they go attend those other churches. Right. I remember we had a guy in our church that you folks know that we have no standards for our choir. We don't have a real choir. I just say, mm -hmm. anybody wants to come up, come up and sing. But even with that, I remember we used to have a long-haired guy come here and I never got on to him about his hair. <laughs> never, unless you hear me preach about it. But I remember he so wanted to sing in our choir. Now remember he finally got to the point where he took that long ponytail of his hair and he tucked it down in his shirt. Yeah. And he stuck it down in the back behind his collar so that when he in it, under his collar, so that when he got up here, you didn't even see. Yeah. I'm saying there's an atmosphere mm -hmm. in independent Baptist churches that is different. In the, now, there are exceptions to the rule. I told you I left the Southern Baptist Convention over the first principle. And I told you that many independent Baptist churches are still dragging around old Southern Baptist Convention habits. Many independent Baptist churches are running with Southern Baptist churches. There's differences between churches within both groups. But what I've given you are, I believe, scriptural marks Amen. of what will be a good church. Amen. And a good church, including, number one, about not belonging to a missions program where you support just the whole thing. A good church is an independent Baptist church. Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist. Now, I talk, again, I have Southern Baptist background, I talk with independent Baptist preachers and members and Southern Baptist preachers and members just about every day. Yeah. So I'm not saying something I don't know anything about. Yeah. What I'd like to do is encourage you to pray for your church. Yeah. I'd like to encourage you to, to, to look to other people in the church and just encourage them. Be patient with them. And you be a part of trying to have the right kind of church. Yeah. Be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. As for me and my house, we know the difference. Amen. My wife and I were about to complete 50 years as independent Baptists. Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptists. And as I said in a message I preached to you not too long ago, within the last year, I think, and I titled it, I have no intention of changing. Stand together, heads bowed.